Hi, my name is Subhashish. I was uh, a digital identity fellow at UOT during 2019 and 20, and I researched on the exclusion of some of the marginalized communities because of Aadhaar, uh, India's biometric ID. Um, disseminating public information in multiple languages has always been a challenge, especially in a country like India that has a population of 1.3 billion people that speak more than 780 languages. And um, out of that, uh, there are 200 plus indigenous languages known as Adivasi languages that are spoken by uh, multiple ethnic groups, uh, about 106 million people in total. That constitute about 8.6% uh, of the population. Now that's slightly outdated data and in 2021 we'll have a census that will provide a little bit more insight about uh, the linguistic diversity and the number of uh, Adivasi communities. However, uh, in 2009 the Indian government launched uh, the Aadhaar program to collect uh, a lot of personal uh, data, including biometrics, and that includes fingerprints, iris, photograph, and uh, all of that data were stored in a centralized database. Um, the biometrics authentication are used um, is uh, the, the biometrics authentication is used for public welfare, including food ration, uh, and now there is a discussion to provide vaccination using um, the Aadhaar as an authentication method. The question here is uh, why one should worry about the lack of literacy about a particular ID program and how that could lead to exclusion. And that was one of the questions that I included in my fellowship research. Um, the, 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 the way I documented uh, some of the uh, exclusions was through creating a documentary film called Marginalized Adhar. And um, so that was a documentary research uh, looking at the subjective narratives. The people that I interviewed uh, mostly were indigenous language speakers uh, or speakers that's, uh, that speak different oral languages, dialects, um, or predominantly oral languages. Uh, some of the oral languages or dialects uh, uh, were also uh, and, and I interviewed people that speak uh, such languages and have disability. So that's an additional level of um, challenge with access. And there are many people that I interviewed are monolingual. Uh, many people also are illiterate in, in official languages. To provide a little bit of context, 93% uh, of India's population has enrolled uh, for Aadhaar. And uh, the Aadhaar uh, website, the UIDAI uh, website uh, that hosts all the information about Aadhaar um, and, and other necessary information about Aadhaar, uh, is now available in 12 languages, whereas most of the federal government sites are available only in two languages. And that's that's really uh, an inclusive uh, way to begin with. However, not a single uh, of those 12 languages include an indigenous language. And uh, there have been cases of denial uh, for food or ration or relief packages during the onset of the pandemic, uh, where biometric ID uh, were were used for authentication. Uh, so Aadhaar was used for authentication in this case and, and biometric means were used for this authentication process. Uh, and, and that definitely um, posed more challenges. The, the problem with biometrics is uh, biometrics is a very consentless and oppressive technology. Uh, Professor Ritika Kera, who is an economist and, and Sunil Abraham, who is uh, a, techno, a, a technology researcher, have shared their uh, share of concerns about um, this challenge. So what the government did is uh, program after program, uh, scheme after scheme, they started saying that not only do you have to have Aadhaar, but you should also link up your Aadhaar with the uh, registry of that program. Yeah, So with the database that exists with the government for that program. Uh, so that, again, has become a huge source of exclusion because sometimes the linking doesn't happen successfully. 
And in many programs, the linking is actually a two-step thing. Uh, one is to link it with the computer database of that program, but also if it's a cash-based transfer, uh, cash support, then they have to also link their Aadhaar number with their bank account. Uh, and that in, uh, has also created a big mess, in the, the mess in the banking system because the banking system is itself mapping on to the Aadhaar payment bridge uh, system. The problem with biometrics is by definition, it is consentless technology. It doesn't need your consent uh, for it to work, especially uh, fingerprints and to some degree facial recognition and iris uh, matching as well. So uh, it violates uh, the most important principle in uh, privacy uh, law and in uh, the broader movement of privacy protection, which is protecting uh, consent. The second is it is really an unempowering uh, technology for the, the people that use it. Now, there is a lack of active consent seeking when it comes to biometrics and people that are illiterate or monolingual uh, and they are not necessarily educated, um, but are asked to comply, to enroll or to authenticate. The, uh, the, the bigger question here is why a government program collects so much private data, especially biometrics, when the purpose is not border control or security, but delivery of food grains or ration. Um, so if we take a step back um, and talk about governance, Governance is not transactional. Um, governance is merely the, uh, the process of upholding the rights by the state for the citizens. And privacy is a fundamental right. So when there is uh, a public program that violates privacy, uh, knowingly or unknowingly, there is a case of exclusion. Uh, one of the emerging one of the emerging trends that I saw is um, um, is there is no literacy program for digital rights. Uh, and digital rights are understood as the human rights uh, in relation to internet and other digital interactions. Um, there's no focus also on literacy of constitutional rights. And uh, in most cases is compliance. Uh, so a researcher who has done a lot of ground research uh, tells me, that the role of Aadhaar for the beneficiaries, the way they perceive it, is to largely um, something that's, that's just to comply with, with the government uh, requirement. So we see a lot of forced use of biometrics with no digital literacy. And um, Pratami, another uh, a community member from the Naik tribe in Goa in Western India, tells me that elders did not get any access to the internet. So they had to enroll for Aadhaar. Um, illiteracy in official languages uh, and illiteracy in general uh, is, is a huge challenge, particularly in indigenous groups. Um, the, uh, the, the literacy rate uh, among Adivasis, mostly indigenous communities, is about 40% and it's much more or less for females, about 37%. So I interviewed uh, several community members and I interviewed uh, a community elder uh, from the Landiasora community. And Landiasora is a dialect that's predominantly um, oral. Um, and this community elder, uh, she is illiterate and is monolingual. And she uh, tells me that we were enrolled for our Aadhaar cards. Um, the government asked us to enroll. Why they are asking us to enroll for Aadhaar? So she never understood the real reason uh, for enrolling for Aadhaar. Uh, and then there are monolingual indigenous speakers. Um, and, and when the goal is to collect massive amount of data and create a huge database, the collection process is never inclusive and it's never uh, meant to educate people but to enforce or sell. Uh, Usha Ramanathan, a law researcher, um, details a lot about that. Um, Professor Mandana Saifidanipur, a noted linguist uh, who I interviewed, 
underlines the linguistic um, role, uh, the, the need for linguistic uh, diversity and, and creating resources, um, and how that impacts uh, the critical public information dissemination. If we are in a situation where the government information, you know, to the resources that are available to people in terms of education, health, access to resources, um, is in a particular language that they cannot access, then that means that it's a measure of exclusion. And I've seen that exclusion in many levels. Um, one particular incident comes to my mind. Uh, I was in a village in the eastern uh, uh, part of India, in a state called Odisha, where um, in, a, in a remote village, uh, a community elder tells me that they uh, have a system uh, where uh, someone called India, which is a misnomer for India, uh, and this person is modern day messenger uh, on behalf of the government who comes and announces in the village on a regular basis, uh, orally, uh, about government program deadlines. And the community members have to comply with uh, these announced deadlines. And this process is not to educate people, but to tell them that they have to go and enroll and they have to go and change their, uh, if there is any error and so on. Um, the local authorities uh, always made it look like Aadhaar is uh, mandatory and is mandatory for public welfare, which is a, a, a kit, which is a region where there is a lot of exclusion that we've seen. So the forced consent that, uh, that uh, many illiterate people and disabled people and other marginalized communities have gone through, uh, that has led to a lot of exclusion in India. And, uh, and I, I would actually argue that uh, this exclusion is much more for people that are indigenous and speak different indigenous languages as their native languages. And uh, because indigenous communities have a higher literacy rate and they are monolingual, and then if they have a disability, that's an additional level of exclusion. The community members that are illiterate or monolingual or disabled rely on family members. And uh, the family members may be literate and multilingual, but there is hardly much educational content that is created uh, to educate people. So, so even though a family member is literate, they might not have um, much idea about how, uh, how their privacy is in question when they enroll for Aadhaar or when they use Aadhaar for authentication. Um, so people rely on public authorities, and, and, and as I said already, that's based on compliance and, and non, not education. So what could have been a better approach? And many interviewees have shared their share of um, suggestions, um, recommendations. And the first thing is literacy of rights, uh, be it human rights uh, or digital rights, particularly privacy. People need to be educated about uh, those rights and uh, that has to be done before massive enrollment. Secondly, there has to be a survey to learn how many people are monolingual and how many people are uh, multilingual and if uh, there is a need for certain language resources to be created to provide literacy for people, that has to be done first. And, uh, and these government programs, uh, particularly like Adar, have to have uh, a lot of open educational resources that are basically learning resources with open licenses and disseminated publicly and they have to be in accessible mediums. Uh, for some examples could be creating audiovisual resources so uh, people who are illiterate or visually impaired or uh, are oral language speakers can access that, um, that resource. Uh, they have to be captioned so that people with hearing impairment uh, or people who are multilingual can uh, watch them. Um, the, the fourth recommendation is use of uh, biometric ID or against uh, or, or how it should be used if it is used. Uh, the first thing is it has to be limited or stopped because it's an oppressive technology, because it's a faulty technology in a way. And uh, the biometric ID should not be used 
in a mass scale, particularly in in, in rural uh, communities um, that are already marginalized in many ways, and uh, and and particularly for uh, social benefits. Uh, um, and when when authentication is made using Aadhaar, we have seen uh, that that people who are below average poverty line are mostly marginalized and many of them are illiterate and it increases um, their um, their um, marginalization. Um, so, so to uh, provide a little bit of insight uh, on that, uh, a 2018, uh, the State of Aadhaar uh, report, um, a research that was done by ID Insight, uh, it shows that 0.8% uh, 2.2% and 0.8% uh, uh, respectively of the rural uh, public distribution system, uh, the PDS beneficiaries from the Indian states of Andhra Pradesh, uh, Rajasthan and West Bengal, they confirmed um, being excluded um, from their entitled benefits. And other was the primary issue for those uh, exclusions. The same report also tells that 7% uh, are only aware of the entire Aadhaar authentication process that is linked to their privacy. So that's very important. Um, and uh, smart cards, on the other hand, could be a better alternative to biometric IDs and they could use modern encryption and they could uh, use um, infrastructures like the public key encryption. And that provides a lot of sovereignty to the users. And it also involves a layer of informed consent. Uh, so the users decide whether or not they want to enroll or whether or not they want to provide authentication and so on. Um, and these recommendations might sound uh, very specific to India, but, but they are very relevant uh, to elsewhere. And then particularly when it comes to indigenous groups and their rights, uh, it's very important that uh, their privacy and their rights are kept in uh, in in uh, in the focus, and they're given uh, the most importance. Um, thank you so much for listening to me.